Hello everyone, welcome to another race in the A Link to the Past Randomizer Spoiler Log Tournament. This is week number two for the Swiss stage. Both our runners are currently 0 and 1, and both of them are hoping to go ahead and change that, give themselves a 500 record. Only one of them will succeed. I am in the booth right now. My name is Hammerbro, and I am joined by Ricky of Gokery. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing awesome. Looking forward to this race. Uh, speaking of this race, this one's going to be a doozy, so go ahead and <laughs> grab your seatbelts if you have them, strap yourselves in, and uh, just hang on for dear life. Indeed. And yes, this is a spoiler race. The runners have spent 15 minutes studying the spoiler log. The comms have spent 15 minutes studying the spoiler log and just having a time figuring out how the runner's going to do this one. <laughs> yes, comms giggling is never a good sign. And we are off. Both runners start in the sanctuary. Yep, it looks like T Stu is headed over for what I would presume is going to be a hula hand room set up here. And Mercer is headed straight for Kakarika. Never mind. Mercer is headed north towards the forest. Alrighty, so that hula hand room setup is done perfectly. T Stu is going to get up to 225 rupees for his trouble, as many as he feels like picking up. While Mercer goes ahead and grabs the ice rod, thankfully we will not be hunting for that somewhere deep in the sea today. T Stu heading down to the fortune teller? I think he was looking for the shop there, if I had to guess. Oh, okay. All right, so the spoiler log format, if you were unfamiliar with it, here's how it goes. Our runners have 15 minutes before this race started. They are given the full spoiler log, has 216 item locations, it tells them where everything is. It also tells them the tree pulls, the, uh, the rupee hoarding crab, what they drop, what the stun prize is, and all that stuff. And they have 15 minutes to uh, devise a route that will give them what they need as quickly as they can manage. So you are going to see a lot of skipped chests today. Um, hopefully, if they're lucky, a couple of skipped areas, some dungeons we won't even have to walk into. That's also why you see the tracker on the bottom. All of our crystals and pendants are filled out, as well as the fact that ether is required for both Misery Mire and TR. We already have that information. Mercer picks up bombs in Blind's hut while t bought bombs and gets the powder out of the dam. Early powder, huh? That's kind of an interesting find. Ah, t using bomb strats on Mini Moldorm Cave. Yeah, well, at this point, you don't have too much of an option. Uh, no, you don't. Powder, I believe, does turn them, but with no magic, we're kind of stuck there. And nice we got the mirror. mirror in the bottom of Kakuku Well, along with some money as well. Yep, and T Stu, meanwhile, grabbing a glove and a piece of heart out of Mini Moldar Cave. And now we have a long walk over to Ice Rod Cave. You generally don't pop over here unless you absolutely need to. Mercer grabbing a really quick green goo over there in the back of the tavern. That could very well come in handy at certain points. Indeed. And let's Im immediately do Sick Kid for the Lamp. That is not a bad place for that safety, honestly. He's still going to Ice Rod Cave, dodging the crabs. Mercer buys bombs as well. Yeah, and the fact that both of our runners with their very divergent initial paths are both grabbing bombs leads me to believe there's not really a whole lot of them in the uh, in the Sphere 1 checks. Ice Rod Cave had the Cane of Samaria. And Mercer's going to go do the race game. 
Meanwhile, it looks like T. Stew is headed up towards Hyrule Castle. For another 300. T. Stu getting an empty bottle off of Uncle. Alright, so Mercer is kind of nearing that 500 rupees Zora area, it's looking like. Not sure if that's what we're going for today. Could just be the quickest way to get a bunch of rupees, so we don't have to worry about pot and the like. But whenever I'm in a spoiler log race and I see more than about 300 rupees, I start to get a little bit uh, suspicious. Mercer also going to Uncle to get that empty bottle, while Tistu makes his way to the Hyrule Castle dungeon. Oof, that bomb was thrown a little too far to take out that blue guard, so we have to do a little bit of a reset. We are going in deeper still. And it looks like with uh, just bombs as well here, Mercer is going to go ahead and follow T. Stu into the castle. But, well, I, I was going to say Mercer has to match the use of Mario, but he hasn't been to Ice Rod Cave yet, so never mind. Yep, and this is as far as t Stu can go, but it's as far as he needs to, because say hello to the bow in the boomerang chest. Oh, but Mercer using the Ice Rod instead. Yep, that is a nice little piece of game knowledge there. The Ice Rod murders Blue Guards in a single shot, so that definitely comes in handy at times. It will still freeze the green ones on the red ones, but the blue ones, it's a one-hit KO. Mercer using the boomerang to ensure the bomb blast gets the guard. And now he gets his bow and takes off as well. T Stu is now doing the Kakariko checks that Mercer already did. Yep, grabbed a hundred in the back of the well and a little more money there, as well as the mirror. And with that bow, it looks like Mercer is headed straight for Green Pendant Easter. With the bow and lamp, it's fully in logic. Octo Rock really trying to get into Mercer's way there. <laughs> yes. Stu grabbing his green goo as well. Yeah, so both runners going for two bottles. Which are both in relatively convenient spots, which is very nice. It's gonna help a lot with, you know, especially low health, as Mercer only has three hearts and T Stu has four. And that's generally the name of the game when you're playing a spoil log seed, because you get to skip all the chests that have stupid, silly, not required things in them. You get a lot less hearts, because, well, pieces of heart individually aren't worth picking up, and because you don't have a chance of picking something else up in that chest, you're not going to grab it. Mercer is headed deeper into Eastern. He did skip that first chest there. 
on for this one that has the big key. Both runners in Eastern Palace. It's always fun to have to go into a pendant dungeon for something. Well, that big key pickup is kind of telling. Indeed. If we're looking for something specifically required, it's either sitting in this big chest up here, or it's sitting on Armos, or else that big key grab would not have been uh, would not have been required to do so. Mercer grabbing both boomerangs. Look, sometimes you like having variety in your stuns, okay? Ooh, nice bow shot from Tisu getting the one Stalfos. Yeah, you don't have too many more options here since both of our runners are still swordless. Mercer went after that red rupee like a homing missile. And now, unfortunately, without a sword, he's gonna have to use individual shots. That Igor causing trouble for Mercer. Tistu using his can of Samaria to wipe out the. What do we, what we call those things? Popo? What are they called? I believe Popo is the correct term. I am not absolutely certain about that, though. Mercer having some difficulty with his final armos, but gets it and picks up the mushroom. And the green pendant. Meanwhile, T2 executes a very nice quick kill, and we have nearly synced green pendant perhaps. And looks like Mercer is on his way to visit Sahasrila, with Tisu right behind him. You know, in terms of seed kindness, this route, uh, yeah. The Moon Pearl. I'm half surprised Mercer didn't just leave a bomb there. Where it's, uh... <laughs> Indeed. And 300 rupees, a heart container, and the book. Of Medora. That's actually a nice Sahasrala closet. It is. It also gives us access to be able to uh, go into and complete the next dungeon on the list if we so desire. Well, for Tistu, yes. Mercer, not quite yet. He hasn't gone the glove out of Mini Modron Cave. But he looks like he's going to do that right now. Yeah, good call. Although, maybe not. Um, t Stu, why are you going back this way? You've already been this way. Um, well, t Stu does have enough money for Zora, so this might be Oh, a fake this is true. He could fake Flipper over there. like Mercer is headed, at the very least, in this general direction. Interesting, Mercer choosing to use bombs on the mini modorms, though he had the bow and the ice rod as options. I mean, when you pull a double kill off on the left-hand side, it's probably worth it. Indeed. 
The fairy in the waterfall gives a blue potion. Very nice. I pick up an empty bottle then too. Holy cow. All right, let's see what Zora has today. Just Why did we need all those rupees? The hammer. Mercer needs to be careful with those crabs. Only got one. Oh, that's uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Alright, and with everything else over here cleared, it does look like T-Stew is headed towards the next dungeon in the vanilla route. Although I would like to point out, with as convoluted as this seed was, we did manage to get Dark World access, but it's it's it took us about 15 minutes to do so, which is pretty right. nice for a story of one seed. Yes! Though I guess when you need to clear out the green pendant for a moon pearl and go ahead and get 500 rupees for the hammer, not to mention the fact that glove is somewhere, TM. So Mercer doing his fake flippers, abandoning Ice Rod Cave for now. So just skipping out on Kena Samaria for the time being. Probably deciding that it's not worth trying to dodge those crabs with such low health. Keep go pick it up later. Perhaps if they find the flute or something. Yeah, flute and or boot would make that a significantly faster check anyways. And that was the hook shot in Desert Palace and an immediate save and quit. Oh, it was boots locked. I missed that. Yeah, with the hookshot being in the one chest we could pick up, it was a boots locked dungeon, anyways. <laughs> and these crabs are not giving Mercer a good time. Good grief. Oh, no. oh my. Okay. Ooh, nice boomerang shot. t Stu heading over to the magic bat, it looks like. No, Mercy, you can't do that. Yeah, 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 go down. It's okay, Ricky D. Press. It's man the professional. <laughs> And what does the magic bat have us have for us today? The Titans mix. And Mercer gets his hammer. And gets right on out. Alright, so to continue on talking about the oddity of this seed, we are sitting at nearly 20 minutes, and neither runner has a crystal, and it is through no fault of their own. <laughs> yeah. Tisu using the hookshot for a little bit faster movement, since we're currently lacking the boots or anything else to make us go fast. Very Take nice. Alright, T Stu, you gotta go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Mercer gonna get his Titans mitts now. And keep in mind, the runners don't lose access to this um, to this spoiler log during the during the race at all. So if you do see them kind of like looking or pausing somewhere or take a wrong turn, it's almost certain that they're staring at their uh, their log for a moment, trying to get a handle on where to go next. Right. Not a bad idea to go ahead and get go ahead and get a health refill here. These boulders do a heart of damage, whether you like it or not. And they like to magnet onto you as well. They do, and the knockback is just bad enough that if you get hit by one, well, there's another one coming. Yeah. T's do making his way up Death Mountain. Mercer looks like he's gonna head over the Desert Palace to get that hook shot. Now with that hammer, Tisu is able, and the Titan Smith, Tisu is able to basically full clear Death Mountain and Dark Death Mountain. We'll see if that is actually required here, but first, we're going to the Tower of Hera. I mean, yeah, to be fair, we're only an ether away from being able to do some amount of clearing in, a, in TR if we really wanted to. He's to doing the Harapot clip. Try to buffer that into the right spot. And the inputs are not cooperating. This is my life. I feel like Tistu is currently joining you in that lifestyle. Is that it? I think Maybe I it was a pixel off. I every time. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, uh, he needs to be careful because if Mercer catches, Mercer can catch up to him. Yeah, it also depends on where that big key is, which you don't currently know. I'm assuming it's fire locked because I feel there like there we go. Go ahead and grab it. But yeah, nicely done there. Second try. Harapot is not fun to line up. So skipping all the chests, just going straight up to Modorm. Just barely staying on there. Moldorm taking an early shot, but T2. Oh, well, never nope. Moldorm said, nope, no, 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 no. You're dropping, whether you like it or not. Sorry, T2. I shouldn't have opened my mouth. Everyone's favorite gigantic worm. So, Ricky, it just occurred to me that Moldorm seems like they're doing some sort of odd dance. Did you ever get that kind of feeling? I think he's just wandering around, no rhyme or reason to it. And it's the flute. You know, I think if you had a lot more people, it would look like the ocarina. Okay. <laughs> Mercer getting badgered by Dead Rocks. I'm not sorry. <laughs> yeah, Mercer taking the same health refill here. It does look like Mercer is headed towards the east side of Death Mountain. Cabbages um, allowing, though. Woo! Just missing yeah. that rock. Yeah, so Mercer's going to go up Death Mountain on the eastern side, while t take took the western route. Oh! Mercer not having a good time with this low health thing. The baddies are just zeroing, zeroing in on him like they have radar. I mean, honestly, at this point, I feel like it's a lack of sword. You don't really have anything to hold out in front of yourself. Yeah, can't do knockback, can't do, can't freeze the dead rocks. It's just, it's nasty all around. And that was the fire rod in Hookshot Cave. I mean, where else would it be? 
Nice full heart, which now sitting at six hearts, T2 is definitely not going to say no to. And that brings T2's bomb total up to three. And oh, there's God. our first sword. 24 minutes, 47 seconds in, in Super Bunny Cave. Yeah, there's our first sword in the Dark World. Yeah, Flippers in Paradox Cave. Yep, so it looks like T-Stew is about to join Mercer in Paradox Cave. Meanwhile, Mercer's Paradox Dip went along swimming. Got a bit of a high five going here. So Mercer gonna head up to do Super Bunny Cave, Hookshot Cave, and then Her Tower of Hera, presumably. Tisu, we will see where he goes next after grabbing those flippers. If the Moldorms let him, good. Yeah. And chat pointing out that we are only an ether away from a full clearable pendant turtle rock. We don't speak of that. <laughs> the only thing I can say with the way the items have been placed out is at least spoil the log seed. The runners know for certain if they have to go in there or not. It's absolutely true. One of the amazing things about these spoiler races, everyone I've seen thus far, it's like, would have been absolutely awful as a normal seed. It certainly does seem that way, doesn't it? All right, Tease Tease do. Go ahead. Activating that flute. Mercer gonna get his fire rod. You know, and at this point, we are fairly limited on what we need to actually complete the seed at this point. We do uh, need that ether medallion on either side. We haven't seen that. We know we're going to need the boots to clear desert. And then, you know, a sword at some point. Um, is... Tisu is doing an early ice palace? Oh, wow. Well, Mercer heads into Tower of Hera. I mean, at this point, if ice palace contains something that's helpful, like, I don't know, a sword that would get us past the plastic one we're currently using, could very well be worth it. Mercer for going the Hera pot, but with the big key sitting there in the uh, in the cage in the um, in the cage, I should say, probably not losing a whole lot of time either way. Especially with all the pause buffers T2 had to do, as T2 picks up the big key himself. He's still gonna do the icebreaker glitch. Yeah, they really should have renamed that Ice Fixer because honestly, it's the <laughs> only glitch that makes Ice Palace tolerable. And smooth icebreaker execution. And a sword. Yeah, that's a pretty good reason to go into Ice Palace early. Moldorm giving Mercer a hard time. One hit. Ah. Two. Okay, actually that was three. I miscounted. I love your impression of uh, of Mercer's little person there. Ah! 
Yes, and for those of you in chat who are kind of uh, following along, the only thing that we could have that's sitting on the pedestal right now would be the boots, and that would be terrible. That would be terrible. Because not only would that be a required item, that would also be an item that makes this... Oh, never mind. Oh, they're an ice palace. Speak chat and you shall receive. Yeah, but he has that green potion, I just realized, so he's okay. Also has sword beams that could potentially be used here. There we oh, go. Oh, whoa, okay. Come on, man, don't forget about that. That makes, that I, makes cold stare fun. What the heck was that? I've okay. heard of that, but that's the first time I've seen it. So, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this glitch, um, it's not usually required. You don't often find yourself in a situation where it'll really, really help you. Um, but if you do like using fire rod shots on cold stair, you can save yourself a little magic as long as you have full health. How it works is, for the amount of time that the fire rod sprite is sitting on cold stair burning away, if you can hit them with a sword beam, the sword beam will do fire rod damage. And that's how T-Stew managed to only use four fire rod shots and do eight hits worth of fire rod shots against um, cold stair. Very nice. Mercer going on his second shot at Ice Rod Cave. More hearts this time, with the flute making it easily accessible. And this time the crabs actually will mostly stay away. Emphasis on mostly. Wow, that one. You just had to say it. You just, he couldn't have waited until he was in the cave. He had to mostly stay away, and then all of a sudden there's... <laughs> All right, so it looks like Tisu is headed right into the other Flipper's dungeon. Say hello to Swamp Palace. And we are still looking for that Ether Medallion, which is... It's got to be sitting somewhere silly at this point. Uh, you'd want to go into Ice Palace first anyways, even if, you know... It wasn't your direct progression because it did have the boots, which makes everything faster as well as being required for desert. And uh, you really want to get that uh, that sword upgrade as soon as you physically can. But at this point, we still do need that ether medallion, and I do believe that is all we need. So we are almost looking at dungeon rush mode at this point. Yeah, chat pointing out that uh, Mercer is using the fake flipper setup with flippers. If I had a dollar for every time I did that, I'd be able to make a living playing this game. One of the most wonderful parts about these foil log races is that you have situations where big, arduous dungeons like uh, Mire or Ice Palace or or Swamp, uh, they can be pretty easily taken out if you know where everything is. You at least know what you can skip and what you can't. Yeah, with that being pointed out, T-Stew is unlocking left side swamp. I don't... Does... wait. Does that work? Alright, looks like we're gonna get an attempted diver down here. I don't know this setup very well, but it looks like... yep, he's got it right there. Meanwhile, Mercer using another little fun glitch with our uh, Kana Samaria, just trying to get that set up correctly. 
uh, using safe crit buffers. I haven't done that setup. This is the one I usually Oof. do. He's just not quite got the lineup right. Yeah, that's too far in the door. There you there. go. Do it. All right, and that should do it. Just go ahead and there, we go. there we go. I'm sorry, I missed it. What was on the left side swamp that TC came all the way over here? Oh, Ether. Oh. Ether! <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, at this point, with uh, with TC's item layout, pretty much the only thing you're going to be going over there for. Like, debatably a tempered sword or a bow, um, only if the other isn't going to be around, but I couldn't think of anything else that could be worth it. Doesn't that put him in go mode then? It, uh, it does, yeah. Not a fun go mode with, uh, with only the Master Sword, but a go mode nonetheless. Well, there's the Tempered Sword and the Shuffle. Yep, and with that Tempered Sword, I can be fairly certain that regardless of what's on that Shuffle, uh, we're not going to see. So Mercer about to start his cold stair fight. And Mercer's gonna use his green potion to finish off the cold stair shell. Yep, and that puts him at seven shots remaining. Oh, he gets rid of two puffs at least. One puff left. Should be just fine. Yeah, this one unfortunately still has most of its health. There we go. So t beats Argus for his third crystal, and Mercer beats Coldster for his second. Yep, we are pretty much at the point where all the dominoes for required items have been laid out, and we can just start knocking down dungeons. Oh, and apparently there is something in the dig spot that Tisu wants. Yep, Tisu making a liar out of me. I said, we're probably not going to see the dig spot, and Tisu said, hmm, hold my shovel. Oh, it's half magic. Mercer gonna go into pod. <laughs> it's interesting, I think, because at this point in the scene, where both runners are basically in go mode, I mean, Mercer needs to get that ether, but, you know, Swamp Palace is on the list of dungeons he needs to go to anyway. It's interesting to see the different choices they make in terms of what order to do these dungeons in. Yeah, t Stu's routing seems to be based upon just getting everything required and then running through whatever's convenient. Uh, whereas Mercer is probably going more for personal preference. He's to getting another heart container in Skull Woods. Well, since we're still sitting on green mail, and we usually like seeing at least blue mail for these, uh, if those two armors are kind of hiding somewhere, then you're you're gonna want more than you know seven eight hearts. If you can help it. Yeah, definitely. Everyone, everyone wants to be able to survive a gamut hug. Huh? 
So while Mercer makes his way through Pod and Tisu makes his way to Mothula, now's a good time to ask all you if you want to follow the runners, Mercer and Tisu14. They're putting on a great show for you today. Also, if you wish, you can follow the commentators and our tracker, Oddwalls, who's been doing a fantastic job keeping the tracker lit up for us and keeping us on point. Yeah, no kidding. Tracking one of these races is tracking on hard mode, at the very least. Maybe expert mode. Because you run across so many items so fast that it's just, it's ridiculous trying to keep up. You know, not to mention, I'm pretty sure this is the most stressful type of seed, at least in my opinion. Because you have 15 minutes to get everything routed up as best you can, with usually just an appalling lack of safeties anywhere in terms of what you would get for a normal either NMG run or for what you'd normally finish a, um, a regular rando race with, and then you just have to go through it as fast as you can. Oof, Mercer getting beetled. And Mafio went down so fast I barely saw him. Ouch. These Beatles are not being nice to Mercer today. None of these enemies are being nice to Mercer today. Yeah, it's been it's it's been a situation where the RNG has not been fun. And then Mercer's been having a little bit of difficulty with just lining up just by a pixel or two, but that's all that's required to give these setups some difficulty there, so it's been it's been a rough seed, and honestly, this seed has put you all across high roll trying to grab things, so, uh... Oh my goodness. Yeah, there you go, use the blue potion. t having cleared Skull Woods, now on his way to Pod as well. Like getting clipped by a murder dactyl there, and as you can see, they're still on green mail, because that is three hearts of damage right off the top. Presumably there's something in the back of Pod that Mercer wants, because he could have just mirrored at that point. Yeah, he does also have the, the small key required. I do not know if he's picked up the big Oh. That's a nice cake. Pod's also just a hard dungeon to route in general. Because a lot of times your uh, the route that you've made up in 15 minutes doesn't specifically include all of the inter-dungeon routes. Right. Um, and if you that spoiler log fast, it, you can easily flip up something for something else. So. That, that's always a bit gimmicky right there. When you use the boots to jump over the ledge, the ledge sometimes thinks it doesn't exist anymore. I don't think I've ever seen that, but I think I've always gone out the south door and then come back, so I don't think... I think that's yeah, why that, that's exactly why I do that, indeed. I had that happen to me one too many times. It was like, okay, you know, and plus the Beatles as well. I, I'll just reset the room at that point. Tisu grabbing his cape. It looks like he's going to be grabbing a couple of keys down here as well. Oh, just the one. Wait, wait, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, he wants the fairy. There we go. Oh, my God. 
Very nice turtle room on Mercer's side. Yeah, getting multiple turtles to end it is always a fun place, even though that's not the optimal way to do it. I love ending on two or three turtles in one shot. sword wailing and down goes the helm sword. So Mercer gets his third crystal. Wait. Oh. So where to next? Looks, Looks like, like Mercer's... Swap. Yeah, yeah, which is good. He'll get the Temper Sword in there. It does kind of raise the question why he didn't do Swamp first to get that Temper Sword like these two did? MG muscle memory is strong. You must go to Todd first. Fair enough. T Stu heading up to Hamasark now. I can form words. Well, that's good because it's your job. <laughs> so after this, all T Stu will have left is Desert Palace and Meyer. You can route those together. And Mercer, after Swamp Palace, will have Skull Woods, Desert Palace, and Mire. And that Tempered Sword makes quick work of Hemosar. Down he goes for T Stew's fifth crystal. Yep, and with the Tempered Sword there, uh, Hemosar really doesn't pose much of a problem. It is very, very nice to be able to just put off a couple slashes on the jewel and be done with it. Alright, Mercer headed towards the map chest. Thank you, Big Team. Alrighty, so with a vanilla ether requirement here, there's a possibility we could get a bird toss. Or my personal favorite, a bird smash with the hammer. <laughs> I don't suspect we'll get either, but it's fun to talk about. <laughs> Got the bird toss. Thank you, Tease Two. Yep, Mercer, forgetting about that hookshotted key over there. Hey, Mercer, if it makes you feel any better, during the uh, finals of this tournament last year, uh, both PKR and Kyung92 forgot that key and walk, tried to walk through the door without it. Fun times. Oh, no. The great part is that we're, they were about five seconds apart, so you literally got to see one of them do it and then the other one right afterwards. It was wonderful. This is a stressful type of race, let me tell you. It is, it is. So fun. And at some point, it's going to get you. It doesn't matter who you are or how good you are, it's going to get you once. T Stu getting the Godmire, heading straight to the back of that big key. And 
and that's honestly a really a really good reason to grab that cape. Um, do we have enough? Uh, that <laughs> I love this game. You face one way, but you use the friggin' cane of Samaria like a frame early, and it just ends up going off to your side like you were doing some sort of whirling lasso movement with it. Mercer... Right. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, all yours, man. Mercer gets his ether medallion, and the enemies once again knocking him down into heartbeat territory, but thankfully he gets a heart drop. Yeah, Swamp Palace is definitely a, uh, a dungeon of small cuts. Nothing does more than a heart of damage even on green mail, but if you keep getting hit, you can very easily just kind of not realize it until you're sitting down at about two hearts and beep beep and you're like oh come on all right nice little modified nmg straps there for t Stu using the spins with the cape as a nice little backup to make sure the damage wasn't taken eight arrows to the big eyeball and that is the recipe for eyeball gelato Mercer not doing the diver down glitch, just going through the back of Swamp Palace, the vanilla way. And T Stu getting his sixth crystal. Yep, and with the seventh one being desert, this one's going to be pretty quick. Mercer gets his tempered sword. He is now officially well. I mean, he was officially in Gumball once he got Ether, but now he's got the per best sword. Well, not the best, but the good sword to beat Ganon. Yep. Now, if we can just get a hold of that silver somewhere, we could make the Ganon fight really quick. Alrighty, Mercer heading in here with uh, Temper Sword. This is going to be quite a bit easier. Just go ahead and do one slash per puff on every puff. And there's a lot of puffs. And then you're done. Still going to want to be careful, though. Only sitting on four hearts. Argus does take two a pop. And does kind of have a funny hitbox at times. So you don't want to yeah. be caught out. One more spin, and there we go. Argus is down. T Stu is about to start his Lamolas fight. Yep, and unless I'm mistaken, we're gonna see a bunch of fire rods here. Oh, that! Oh, come on! That was not friendly at all for fire rod strats. Thanks for the short hop, jerks. <laughs> Alright, with that, that is crystal number 7 for t -Stew. So we have a nice little game we like to play. There are 22 chests in the basement of GT. Don't get numbers. We don't do numbers for spoiler log. I know you guys have probably already started. Alright, I need a location. So, give me a chest. What chest? I need the room, and if there's multiple chests in the room, I need the specific chest. Because we are going to be skipping, hopefully, a bunch of chests along the way. So, go ahead and give me your guess. Ricky, my friend, did you look at the spoiler log for GT? Do you know where that big key is? I did not look at the spoiler log at all. I am going to guess that the key is compass room top left. Compass room top left. Okay, well, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess pretty similarly to you, and I'm going to go with vanilla room left-hand side. Sounds good. Mercer heading into Meyer. 
Yep, Mercer rolling through my are just going to have a quick desert followed by a quick skull woods after that, and then he'll be headed up towards the mountain as well. Those dead rocks trying to give Tistu a hard time with that fairy. And in spite of all of the early items, I would like to point out the one thing this seed didn't make us do is we didn't have to go into TR. Yes. We also didn't have to go into Thieves Town, but if there weren't a spoiler log around, we probably would have, because Pend of Thieves Town, you would at least clear the front. And with that, GT is open. Let's find out where that big key is. Knowing my luck, I'll get the right room but the wrong chest. It happens far too frequently for me to be pleased at all. Going right, though, so probably not in the vanilla room. <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> well. You know, I'm looking through this, and you guys are like terrible we had like three or four tile room guesses have you no shame <laughs> yep as someone in chat says that's a god ganon's tower just one room and up the gauntlet we go yeah well, won't say no to that small key too Anyways, shout outs to Phase9950 for guessing uh, first room, second chest. Wasn't the technical definition, but I'll give it to you. We knew what you meant. And Tisu gonna want to be careful here on arrows. Yeah, that's. All right, there we go. All right, so as as Mercer makes his way out of Mire and or out of the Mire dark rooms and headed towards Viddy, our favorite eyeball boss, uh, don't tell Cold Sarah Argus I said that they'd probably be sad. T Stu going to be making a pit stop for some fairies. Uh, meanwhile, Mercer using the second best glitch you can do with the cape. If you have the cape active and you just repeatedly swing with your sword, the magic doesn't go down very much at all. My favorite glitch with the cape is if you have the cape on and you hold on to a wall, the magic doesn't go down at all, because that makes sense. <laughs> Ooh, these Stalfos giving T2 some trouble here. There we go. Don't the Stalfos always give people trouble? I wasn't yeah. aware that there was another option. <laughs> Alright, so with Meyer completed here, Mercer is headed into desert as T2 is headed towards Landmo 2. These rooms are some of the most satisfying in the game. They're not difficult to get correctly, and once you do, you feel awesome. Oh, like that. That was awesome. Yep, every time. It just feels so good to just take out four whiz robes over the course of about three quarters of a second.
All right, so for those of you who are curious, I feel like I can go ahead and give this one away now. The Butter Sword was in fact sitting on Lake Hylia Island today. So uh, not really along the way for us. And there is a blue male, which is definitely not something we're gonna say no to. Definitely. Alrighty, one more crystal here left over from Mercer, and T Stu is just about ready for his agonometry exam. Did you just say agonometry? You know, I know that I stutter sometimes, but I'm pretty sure my delivery was fine on that one. That is exactly <laughs> what I said. <laughs> And, you know, I just realized that it's supposed to be a cross between agonim and trigonometry, but it right. almost sounds like you're adding food in there or something. <laughs> okay, dang, that was a good Agatou fight. It was. Like, what What noise does a wizard make when he eats agonom nom 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 nom? <laughs> I'm sorry. Mercer going into Skull Woods while t Zoo gets ready for his Ganon fight. And speaking of nom noms, we got the burrito text. I fancy that I would be a chicken burrito because I like every freaking safety I can get my hands on. How about you, Ricky? <laughs> what does chicken burrito have to do with safeties? Because I'm a chicken and I want all the safeties. <laughs> okay. Speaking of safeties. Speaking of safeties, T2 using the cape to get through phase two, no problem. My kind of strategy. I mean, you have it. You have half magic. You might as well. Meanwhile, Mercer, um, sitting on three hearts. So. Yeah. Oh, All right, Ganon, stop it. Oh, sniped by the bunny beam on Mercer's side. Somehow not sniped by a um by a mini Moldorm there. I'm not quite sure how he managed to dodge all of them. So the Silvers were in Ganon's tower, according to Ganon. Yep, they were in the compass room. Oh. <laughs> On the bottom right chest, which I don't believe was the chest you guessed for. No, the I guessed room. top left, so it was like exact opposite. Yeah, there are only five rupees there, so uh, you, you you weren't you didn't get any significant anything significant this time. Although you were closer than me, freaking vanilla <laughs> big key. All right, Mercer cutting it close here. Two hearts can take one more kiss to a spike, but has to avoid the moth altogether. Nicely done. Meanwhile, T-Stew is just spinning until he gets dizzy. Twelve spins for the last and cycle. And there, there it is. Alrighty, so we have a three-by-one bridge to go ahead and cross, and then you can get your GGs in chat for T-Stew, finishing in first place with an official SRL time of one hour, four minutes, and six seconds. Well, well, the official SRO time includes the study period, so it would be one hour, 19 minutes, six seconds on SRO. Alrighty, and with that, we do have a forfeit from Mercer, who just did feel like climbing GT today. I don't play. Yeah, I, I can't blame like him. Whatever. Alrighty, and I do see Mercer in the setup ready to join. Hopefully, T Stu will be here in just a moment as well. Mercer, how about that seed, man? That was not fun. 
Hi, it was fun. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there was a better way to route the early game, but I realized like partway through that mine was invalid because I forgot to check if Desert was boots locked. And then I got there and I was like, and on the way there, it was boots locked. Or rather, I took an overworld death while I was checking that because I was like, oh, I better check this. Um, T Stu, we are joined by you as well. GG, my friend. Uh, this seed was fun in the beginning. Yep, GG's Mercer. GG. Congrats. Thanks. Yeah, I'm not sure if there was a way to avoid double dipping desert. I accidentally ensured I would because I forgot to check if it was boots locked or not. <laughs> Yeah, that is something that T-Stew did as well. I don't know that it was logically... Well, yeah. I, f I feel like it was probably logically required, or at least faster to just go ahead and get that hookshot anyway. So. Logically, you could have done Swamp first, but you would have had to grab Bombos from Pyramid. Because hook cause, uh, Fire Eye was in Hookshot Cave. Right, which is why I wanted to do Desert before and up there. But yeah. I, yeah, I'm not sure if our routes were wildly different or if it was simply that uh, I'm much worse at this game than you are. They're Possibly a little bit. Beginning. Yeah, I peeked in like 10 minutes ago just because I was curious about where you were, but other than that, I didn't look. So most I for a decent amount of the time. Yeah, not so much because of uh, you know anything other than I play bad enough even with my full focus on the game. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, as we were saying before, spoiler log races are one of the most demanding set of races you can do because not only do you have to route everything quickly and usually at a, at a pace that you can very easily make a mistake or overlook something, you're also playing really low percent nine times out of ten. Unless you get really lucky and there's a bunch of safeties and a bunch of hearts, a bunch of health, that sort of stuff, just right along the way. You're playing with less than you normally would for almost the entire season. I mean, armor was along the way. It was just 98% along the way. <laughs> yeah, that, that I, don't, I don't know that I would call armor in GT along the way to any point where it's actually useful. I would have. I didn't get the Ganon, but I would have been happy to have Blue Earl Ganon. When I, I don't usually take Cogs, but I certainly eat Fire Bats. Yeah, and with the other one sitting in Mimic Cave, you just you definitely weren't getting that one. No, but um, yeah, I, I took a couple of bad deaths, and uh, just I'm sure my execution was slower all around. Was probably the difference without having looked. It was, it was mainly the deaths and then the way that you kind of rerouted things as a result of the deaths. I also think the T-Stew's choice to go into Swamp first and, or after Ice, I should say, and get that third sword just kind of made the boss fights quicker for him. Um, because, you know, your, your, um, your Helm of Sword took a little bit longer and that, and that and the like. Whereas you were on, you know, Master Sword yeah. for a couple more dungeons than he was. I think it would have just been Pod, but yeah. Well, that was also, I apparently, in my original route, I forgot to actually put pod anywhere. So I was like, well, I've got everything for it. I should just do it because it's not in my written route and I might forget otherwise. The last thing I want is to go to GT with six crystals. That would be embarrassing. That's fair. So how, how are you guys feeling? t Stu, you got your first win. Um, so are you looking forward to week three in the one and one in the one-on-one -on -one bracket now? Mm, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, Mercer, I imagine you've been you've been practicing these quite a bit. Are you are you getting a better handle on them? Are they getting easier? Because it's I've I've tried to even route one, and it is super difficult to do it in 15 minutes. So I imagine that's where most of the practice goes in. Uh. Yeah, no, I haven't practiced all that much because a lot of my free time goes to talking about them, which is much uh, more my speed. But it is, uh, <laughs> it is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. I figured coming into the tournament, I'd be probably one of the, you know, bottom fifth in terms of players, which in Swiss means like two and five, three and four, somewhere in there. 
Um, so I'm kind of looking forward actually to the matches against the other people who are around my skill level because, uh, you know, there definitely are a wide variety in this tournament and it's going to show. Like, that's the nature of spoiler log, it's just skill is going to win out. That is fair. Um, I do wish you guys the best of luck moving forward. Definitely be watching both of your races moving forward. Um, did you guys want to, uh, and do you guys have anything you wanted to end with before we, um, I turn it over to Ricky to tell us about the schedule and stuff? Not really. Nah, just, uh, congrats to T Stu. Good luck going forward. Uh, and that's pretty much it for me. Thanks. Awesome. Well, these guys both put on a great show here, so make sure you give them a follow. Mercer and T Stu 14. Huge shout outs to our tracker who was pressing the buttons at lightning speed because uh, tracking is very, very difficult for the uh, for the spoiler log attorney, as I've mentioned before. And Ricky, do you have the schedule up today, my friend? Yes, I do. So thank you, Mercer and T Stews, for the great race. Please follow them if you wish. I put the links in the chat. And thank you, Hammerbro, for commentating with me. Always a delight. And again, thank you, Oddwalls, for tracking, doing a fantastic job there. On the schedule coming up, right now, I believe, on Speed Gaming 5, we have Gentleman versus Ace 0187. That's happening right now. They're in the middle of that. But at in, what is it, a couple hours? At 8.15 p.m., we have Furry Me versus Revenant on Speed Gaming 4. And F. Coughlin versus Sir Linkalot at 10.15 on Speed Gaming 3. We also have a few more matches scheduled, but nothing's been assigned channels yet. But keep an eye on the schedule for when those assignments get made. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you had a great time and have a fantastic day. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. And as you can see, with T-Stew's 71 collection rate, uh, yeah, we, we skip a lot of stuff. That's all we got. We do have another race coming up at 8.15, which is, in fact... The study period is probably starting right about now, so if you guys want to jump over to Speed Gaming 4, if you haven't had your film, go ahead and do that. That's all I got. Have a great night, everyone.